Hey, this is Pastor Jeff Daniel of Kingdom Light Church. Get ready for a destiny molding, destiny shaping, destiny impacting, and destiny transforming word of God today. In Kingdom Light Church, you will always know the truth, the truth that will set you free. Now, let's get ready for the word that will bring light to your life. Your blessing, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Welcome to church this Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse 1, then we're going to jump. Um, well, we might not jump because I think if we jump, we're going to leave something behind. So let's not jump. <laughs> Amen. Hebrews 4 verse 1, therefore, together, let us therefore fear lest a promise remains of entering his rest. Let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard, it did not profit them. And the reason it didn't profit them is because of what? Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter the rest as he has said. Father, help us in Jesus' name. While you are on your seat or going down to your seat, I don't know how long it's going to take you to get to your seat, but tell your neighbor before you hit the seat, I am covered in the covenant. Amen? On your way down. Make sure before you get down, before you hit your seat. It might take you, some people might take you four hours to get down, but that's fine. Just make sure before you get down, you tell your neighbor, I am covered in the covenant. Amen. Welcome to church this Sunday morning. I want to talk to us on the subject titled, Tag Team with Jesus in Prayer. Tag Team with Jesus in Prayer. How many of you have watched wrestling match where you have a tag team? Have you watched that before? All right, so um, I want to help us a little bit in our subject of prayer. This month we'll be focusing on prayer. And uh, I want you to be very sincere to yourself and ask yourself, this thing called prayer, is it working for me? Is it working for me or is it something that they say I should do and I'm doing it? Because it is possible for us to jump into religion and not enjoy what God promised us regarding the subject of prayer. One day Jesus, bring it down a little bit. One day Jesus Christ, he had been celebrated because he went into Jerusalem. And uh, the Bible reveals to us that they uh, dropped their clothes on the ground and his horse or donkey you know was stepping on people's clothes and they were celebrating Hosanna Hosanna and then on his way back something happened and then from there he went into the temple and the Bible tells us something where he got there he found an activity going on which he calls it the activities of a thief so they were selling they had turned the house of God to a den of thieves. Meanwhile, the house was called the house of prayer. If you have lived long enough and by any means have traveled out of your house just as basic as that for a long time and you don't nobody stays in that house for one month 
I guarantee you by the time you come back, you may need to fix something that was not spoiled when you left. Because whenever a house is left with no activity, it depletes. Are you with me? God says that you are his temple and that temple, he calls it the temple or the house of prayer. When prayer is not going on in your life, you are depleting. Let me say that again. When there is no activity of prayer going on because you are what? The house of prayer. When prayer is lacking in your life, you have ushered in the activities of a thief. Because when there was no prayer, thieves were having a field day. <laughs> and a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I, somebody right now, what you are dealing with is because there was no prayer, so the thief found occasion to come in. If there is prayer, the thief can come in because the house is supposed to be called the house of prayer. As a child of God, when you miss out in praying, then you have actually opened yourself up for the devil to devour you. To devour your mind, to devour your health, to devour your strength, to devour everything. So it is important for us to know the value of prayer. It is one thing the Bible says we should do without season. Pray without season. So this season, we're going to learn what is this thing called prayer? How does it profit me? On Wednesday, we discover that if your prayer will profit at all, you must come faking it like Jacob because you don't qualify to come before Jesus. And the Bible says Jacob came before his father in order to be blessed as the firstborn. But for that to happen, he had to cover himself in the blood of the lamb. Otherwise, he will not get the blessing. Are you still here? You have to understand the potency of prayer. And so, if we have to pray to get answers, then we must incorporate one individual, the Bible calls him Jesus Christ, and then the book of Hebrews reveals that he's the great what? High priest. The great what? High priest. In, Rome, uh, in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, give me King James Version. Let me show you something quickly. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1. King James. Okay, let me find my Bible. Somebody's mad at me. Okay. Wherefore, holy brethren, one, partakers of what? The heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of what? The high priest of what? What is our profession? <laughs> Christianity is a profession. Christianity is what? It's a profession. That being a Christian is supposed to be your profession. So before we even press further, the way you practice Christianity, will it pay you the same way a professional footballer gets paid? Does your Christianity profit you like a professional basketballer? Because it says our Christianity is a profession. Do you understand what I'm saying now? If it's a profession, are you treating it as such? Are you behaving as a professional? Are you acting as a professional? Are you engaging as a professional? What makes a person or how does one become a professional in what he does? 
Who can tell me one thing? Before you become good, Bishop, you are running too fast. You can become good. What? How do you become good? What? Continuous what? Continuous training. Continuous exercise. Continuous training. I am tired. Doesn't exist. I don't feel like. Doesn't exist. If you are going to be a professional, there is no such thing as I am tired today. I can't do it tomorrow. No, I have something else to do. No, you are so focused. This is what you engage. You put all your energy into. The Bible says we should consider who? The what? The apostle and the high priest of our profession. We as believers, we have a profession. And that profession can only profit you if you engage as a professional, if you act as a professional, if you think as a professional, if you behave as a professional, if you take it serious as a professional. Otherwise, there is no way Christianity will profit you. And if the truth is to be told, many of us, we are not even in the gallery to watch. Let's look at this scripture, 1 Timothy chapter 4. And verse 8. I'm still building. I want you to make. Because God told me. Gave me a very strong assignment. To raise a fire brand people. In Kingdom Light Church. That's why we're engaging. In this three times spring. I'm, you know. That we're, I always add fasting to it. I don't know why. But maybe somebody needs to catch that. Now let's read this together. For what? Bodily exercise does what? A prophet how? But what? Godliness is what? Profitable unto what? Hmm. So, bodily exercise will profit a little. It will give you some muscles. It will give you some very flat tummy in case that's what you want. It will give you six pack. Uh, for some of us, I don't know what is the pack, but but it says that if you can understand in the natural that bodily exercise has profit, there is another exercise and that bodily exercise will profit little. But there's another exercise that you must engage in and it's a spiritual exercise and it says that exercise does not only profit a little. It does not only profit in the natural. It has profiting for natural things or in the physical realm because it says it is profitable unto what? All things having promise of the life that now is. So spiritual exercise can profit. The reason why people go to the gym, the reason why people exercise, what is the number one reason? I know there are many carnal reasons that people engage in, but why do people exercise? To stay in shape. So they can look good. Is that, that's a carnal reason. Thank you. To stay healthy. Aha. It's not to, Bishop, I need to talk to you after this service. You know, so to look good, okay. Hmm. All right, let me try it a little bit more. Bodily exercise will profit in the natural, and people do it and it, it works. Is that not true? How many of you know some people have the entire fitness center in their house, but uh, they have to show you the fitness center because you can't see it in them. Amen. <laughs> Some people have taken a, you know, very robust, uh, busy day, clean out their garage because there were cells. How many of you know that there's a lot of cells on treadmills? Yeah, yeah. Because they know people can be so motivated to buy it, but they won't use it. It takes work. So they have even helped us to have 24 hours fitness. Yeah, so that when you have eaten a whole bucket of ice cream in the middle of the night, 
you can console your emotions by going to the gym like hey let me go shred this word some people have decided that God will have to be the one to burn the calories for them but the Bible says there is something spiritual that you can do that can also give you that health that it, it will give you that spiritual or physical shape that you need glory be to God it will make you strong whatever the natural exercise we do for you that there are spiritual exercises that you engage in if you want good health there are spiritual exercises you can do to inject good health into your body if you want strength you can engage in physical or spiritual exercises that can give you good health the bible says these spiritual exercises it profits in all things for the life that now is and also for the life that is to come. Prayer is one of those major exercises. Glory be to God. If you want good health, what you will get a little of from the gym, the Bible says prayer and fasting, studying the word of God can give you good health. Are you, are you following me? It says this one is better than the physical one. But the same way people struggle, even though they pay, they reduce, you know, it's so cheap, right? Yeah, they make it so cheap because they know they are going to just cheaply rob you of your money. You won't come. So their machines will last for a long time. Because they know already, they know you will come on Monday and then you'll be tired on Tuesday or Wednesday, but your money is still running. That's why it's $10 a month. You think, well, it's nothing. They are capitalizing on that weakness. The devil is capitalizing on your inconsistency in spiritual exercises. You must be wise to know that if the house is called the house of prayer and there's no prayer going on, then you have invited thieves to come in there. Thieves will always come to the house of an individual where prayer is lacking. It will rob you of your peace. It will rob you of your joy. It will rob you of your comfort. It will rob you, rob you of your dreams. It will ensure that you can't see dreams or visions. You won't have a focus in life. It will keep you doing mundane things instead of you focusing on something that will profit you in life. The Bible says godliness is profitable in all things for the life that now is and for that which is to come. Are you still here? So in Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible began to reveal to us that the rest which God has even spoken to us as a church this year, that it is possible. It says there remained rest for God's people. Somebody say rest. It says rest is available. That thing that has troubled you for a long time. The Bible says there is room for you to rest. You have been part up and you wonder about in life. Everywhere you go, it, it looks like your life has there's something that invites trouble in your life. The Bible says there remained rest. The Bible says the children of Israel committed a blunder. And so in the book of Hebrews, we are told what actually was the reason why they didn't enter the rest. There was a main reason why they didn't enter. The Bible says the reason was not because Moses was not preaching. The reason was not because God was not speaking. The reason was not because they didn't see miracles. Because they saw miracles. The problem was the fact that what they were hearing, they lacked the wisdom and the ability to mix it with faith in them. How do you mix what you hear? In verse 12 of Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible begins to tell us this one major thing or one of the things that is needed to mix what you are hearing with faith. For the word of God is quick and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. That word of God, the Bible says, it can pierce beyond the bones and the marrow. 
It says it is a discerner of the intents of the heart. So first thing, if you must enter rest, you must pay attention. The Bible says in verse 11, be diligent to enter that rest. Be diligent. Labor to enter that rest. You take, it will take work to enter the rest. If you are not willing to work, you can't enter the rest. Because even God had to work to enter rest. I say God had to work before he rested. You haven't worked, you want rest. It won't happen. So, you engage the word of God. Then in verse 16, it tells us, Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find help to meet in the time of need. So, two things, the word and then, what? Prayer. Now, there's a disturbing story in the Bible that if you're a Bible student, by now you should have stumbled in that story and something should have snapped in your mind. That how mean can God be? Numbers chapter 20 is where we're going. The Bible reveals to us that the children of Israel had journeyed and they got to a particular place now. Beside the first time that they needed water, this time around they still needed water and now they confronted Moses. The Bible calls this the day of the rebellion. The day of contention. Are you in Numbers chapter 20? Give me verse uh, 11 and 12. Let's, for sake of time. And Moses, so now, they got there, so they complained against Moses. And they needed water. Is that right? Now, Moses cried to God. And God gave him an instruction. The instruction was that he should take the rod and the rod in scriptures represent Jesus. Okay? Hebrews, uh, Isaiah 11 tells us that Jesus is the rod. He's supposed to take Jesus and the Bible said he's supposed to go to the rock and that rock is who? Is Jesus. And the Bible now is telling us that when he gets to the rock, this time around, Moses, don't strike the rock. Speak to the rock so that water will come out for the nourishment of the people. Moses got there out of irritation. He decided to do something else. The Bible said that Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod. And water came out abundantly and the congregation and their animals, they drank. Hmm. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. Why didn't God stop the water from coming out? Amen. God didn't stop the water from coming out. Because, number one, Jesus Christ has everything you need. Whatever approach you bring to Jesus, you can get what you need from him. Except that if you go the wrong route, you will be punished for that. So there are people who are using the name of the Lord in vain. They are using the name of the Lord to get miracles. The Bible says on that day, many will say, did we not cast out devils in your name? Did we not prophesy in your name? You say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I knew you not. The name was working. The reason why it was working and it will work is because the name carried the potential and it has everything you need. But there is always a pattern by which you can get to the name. Moses violated the pattern, but God allowed the water to come out, and yet Moses will be punished. Now, the reason why God will punish Moses, now listen to this carefully, Moses was good at downloading patterns from heaven. He knew how to receive patterns from heaven. In this kingdom, it is not just the act Activity of prayer that brings the answer. It is doing it according to the pattern. 
That's what we're trying to learn. You must understand that if prayer will produce result, there is a route. There is a way to go. You cannot go behind. You cannot go your own way. You can't choose how to pray. You can't come with the attitude that the Bible says no such an attitude or disposition will not earn you anything in prayer. So you have to understand how God does it. So one time God told Moses how the children of Israel are supposed to camp. Amen. How many of you know the story of Balaam and Balak? The Bible says in Numbers chapter 24 when Balaam was hired because Balaam was a very powerful sorcerer. Hey. He had a record that if Balaam curses you it will stick. So Balak wanted to fight the people of God. Listen, this is good. Balaam or Balak wanted to fight the people of God just like the devil is looking for ways to uh, 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 compromise your destiny. He did not check his military might. Balak didn't check or investigate his military capacity to fight the people of God. He went to another realm in order to cripple their capacity. You see, until something goes wrong in the realm of the spirit or something goes right in the realm of the spirit, whatever you do here will either work for you or work against you. That is why it is important for us to arrange or become priests in the realm of the spirit to decide. Some of you, what you are dealing with now, there is an evil priest in your bloodline that it keeps instigating those demons. You don't know. That's why the Bible says when men slept, an enemy did something. You can't afford to sleep because in order for the realm of the spirit to perform on the earth, there got to be a priest that gives permission. So you might not be the one giving permission but can you be the one hindering them glory be to God because if you don't know how to stop their priesthood their own priesthood will continue to gain advantage over you so Moses or Balaam or Balak went and hired Balaam but something happened when Balaam came to curse the people his instrument didn't work that day it didn't work why didn't it work? You know, we have read this scripture in chapter 23 where it says, um, uh, 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 God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he a son of man that he should repent, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then what is that one that it says? No enchantment, no divination against Israel, and no enchantment shall stand. Why is it that it won't stand? Because have you checked your life and discovered that it stood? Because sometimes we cut scriptures without really paying attention to whether what we're saying is working or not. So in chapter, because that was in chapter 23, right? Now give me verse chapter 23, verse. 22 or 23. Numbers. Hmm. For there is no sorcery against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. It now must be said of Jacob and of Israel, oh, what God has done. Aha, uh -huh. verse 24. Look, a people rises like a lioness and, it's, and lifts itself up like a lion. It shall not lie down until it devours the prey. Uh, verse 25, I think I missed something. Verse 22, give me verse 22. 20. Where it says, for he has not behold. He has not behold iniquity. He has not behold is there. Verse 21. Good. Give me verse 21. Verse 21. This computer needs a new one. He has not done what? Observe what? 
iniquity in Jacob, nor has he seen wickedness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. Verse 22 now. Verse 23. For there is no. Why would there not be? Because he has not observed iniquity in them. If he had observed iniquity, if he observed that is iniquity, the enchantment we hold. The Bible says a curse, curseless, cannot stand. So if there is a reason, the curse will be there. Amen? Now, what what was that thing that God observed that was not there? We call it iniquity. But in chapter 24, Balaam reveals a deeper secret to us that when he came to curse them, he saw the children of Israel, they were in their tent. It was so lovely. What, you know, the children of Israel were in a valley. Balaam and Balak were on top of the hill. So he came to curse them. So when he came, while he was standing, they were standing on the mountain. You remember how he went from different mountains, seven kinds of sacrifices to curse them? It didn't work. Then he decided to check again because they kept paying him more in order to curse God's people. When he checked to look, he observed that they were in their tent so lovely. What was that? When you check the arrangement of their settlement, you know, you come to church, you sit here, you say, the children of Israel don't sit like that. No, they don't sit like that. They, their formation is such that it pictures a cross. That was a pattern. So Christ was the center of their life. So even when they were not aware that somebody wanted to curse them because Christ was in their midst, the curse wouldn't work. Listen to me. Once Christ becomes the center of your prayer, the center of your life, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 that he is the preeminence. By him all things consist. If you remove Christ from anything at all, it will deplete, it will scatter. The Bible says when Balaam saw their settlement, it was so lovely because Moses had discovered a pattern from heaven and he told them, Benjamin, no matter how much you want to sit on the left hand side, no, you are supposed to sit on this side. Uh, Reuben, no matter how much you want to sit in the front, no, your position is supposed to be at the back. Uh, and because it was a pattern and that pattern was to mirror Jesus Christ, uh, it didn't matter who wanted to release a curse. Uh, listen to me, if your house is in accordance to the pattern that God has set in place, no devil can mess up your marriage. If your business is not according to the pattern of heaven, no demonic curses can ever rest on you. Glory be to God. Do you understand? The reason is, when we don't obey the patterns of God, we give room for Satan. Everything has to mirror what heaven has ordained. Once that is no order, once that is no pattern observed, and Moses knew this. That was why when Moses knew that Jesus is only to be killed once, he allowed irritations. He allowed his flesh. He messed up with the pattern because Christ is to be smitten once. He is to die only once and after that, salvation is to come. When Moses knew that, he violated it. God said, forget it. There is a sin that the Bible says is a sin unto death. It doesn't matter. You know, I told you guys before, God has no permanent friend. <laughs> Just because God was, wow, was good to you yesterday, everything was fine between you and God yesterday. Be careful. If you violate today, God can cut you off. Amen. You know, Elijah killed himself. 
because he thought God could do or can't do without him. God said, okay, since you think, first of all, you're not the only one. I have 7,000 on the bench. I have not even used them. But since you are insisting that you want to die, now, there is so much in you that could have silenced Jezebel and silenced every other devil. And that thing you carried can fill three other vessels. <laughs> so, Elijah had the anointing that killed Jezebel in him, which he transferred to somebody, transferred to somebody, transferred to somebody, and yet he was running away from what he could have killed. I don't know what you're running away from because you don't understand who you are in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. And so God said, okay, that's fine. You have great potential, but this is what I'm going to do. Just make sure you anoint the people, anoint this one, anoint that person, because nobody has the capacity to handle what you have just by you. Yet he died. He was taken up because he didn't know that God can do without him. Amen? The same thing happened to Moses. Moses knew that the pattern was that you need to speak to Jesus. That is why the Bible says he is what? He is the high priest of our confession or our profession. He is the one now. He is saying to us, you as a child of God, your priesthood should be to talk. Talking, 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 talking. This talking that you complain that some people talk too much. This talking that you talk too much yourself. Can you learn how to talk too much with God? Hallelujah. If we check your credit, how much of it, that cell phone, how much of it goes to talking? How about your spiritual cell phone? How much of it goes to talking to God? It's a challenge. But in order for us to enter the race, we must learn how to exercise priesthood. The Bible says you were redeemed to be a king and a priest. I told you before, you were not redeemed to be a Christian. You were redeemed to be a king and a priest. If you miss out in being a priest, you can't be a king. Because every king has an altar that powers that throne. Every king has an altar that powers his throne. Every king has an altar that powers his throne. So that when he speaks, he's not speaking as a human being. The altar represents a spiritual element. That is why the king can issue a command. The Bible says wherever the word of the king is, there is power. If you don't have an altar of prayer, your words will not mean anything anything. In fact, it won't strike a chord in the realm of the spirit. That is why every time you are spoken, nothing changed because there was no prayer. If you want your decrees to carry weight, it is prayer that powers what you say. We have confessed and confessed and become confused. But that is changing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? So, if my prayer will work, first thing before we go to this morning, the Bible says there was a man called Jesus in John chapter 11. He reveals something. John 11 verse 40. Go back to New King James now. The Bible says he came to the tomb of Lazarus and the sisters of Lazarus followed him and they were worried that he was asking them to remove the tomb or the stone. He said, Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if only you believe you will see what? The glory of the Lord. Then he prays for that. Keep going. And then, then they took away the stone from the place where he, the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, read together. I thank you that you have what? Hmm. Okay, next part. And I know that what? You always, ah, if my prayer must work, I need to team up with someone who said he knows the father always 
hears me. He says, I know that the Father always hears me. When was the last time you were so sure that your prayer, the Father heard you? Well, it confirmed that the Father always heard him because when he said, Lazarus, come out, Lazarus came out. Is that right? So, if I'm going to pray successful prayers, I must factor in Jesus Christ's prayer ministry. Listen to me. Your prayer life will change and shift when you know you are tag teaming with Jesus Christ whom the Father always hear him. Oh, Jesus Christ. Listen. Give up your own prayer warriorship because some of us, we claim to be prayer warriors but we are sin warriors too. We are prayer warriors but we are anger warriors. Prayer warriors, but fornicator warriors. Prayer warriors, but lying warriors. That even though nobody can defeat you in prayer, the same way nobody can defeat you in lying. It is not enough for you to be a prayer warrior and to be a fornicating warrior. A lying warrior. A gossip warrior. Glory be to God. You must be careful what you tag yourself to be. Because many times we express certain characteristics. And yet in the secret, God took Ezekiel and said, Hey, let me show you what is going on with the church. How can you claim to be a prayer warrior? And you have not even caught a rabbit. What kind of a hunter are you? There is no evidence. So we must learn how to tag team with Jesus. Because Peter was about to be wiped out in Luke 22. And the Bible reveals to us that Satan came to Jesus. He came to take permission. Because he cannot ravage your life unless Jesus gives him permission. Oh, hallelujah. You better have Jesus in your calm not to give Satan permission to mess with you. Huh? That even Jesus, when Satan demanded, he wanted to wipe Peter out, Jesus didn't rebuke Satan. Jesus prayed for Peter. Oh, Jesus, pray for me. Can you say that? Hallelujah. Jesus, pray for me this week. Huh? Jesus could have rebuked Satan. Said, Satan, get out of here. You can't. No. He says, I have prayed for you. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Hebrews 7, 25. I'm trying to get you to profit from your prayer adventure. When we start from therefore, we will miss something. Is that not true? So let's read what brought us to the therefore. Verse 23. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you still here? Also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. There were many priests. Okay? They were prevented. Death cut them short. But he, being Jesus, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable word. He has an unchangeable priesthood. And this unchangeable priesthood, see why you need it in your life. Read verse 25. Therefore, because of his unchangeable priesthood, he is able to save to what? He is able to do what? To save to the what? Those who come to God through him. Since what? He always lives to do what? To make intercessions for them. The reason why you won't go to hell is not because of your own effort. It's not because you pray so much. If Jesus doesn't add his prayer, you can't make it to heaven. Let's read it again. Therefore, he is able to do what? Save how? Oh, he is able to save us to the other ones. That means there is an end where we need to arrive. <laughs> if you are going to make it to that end, it won't be you. If you don't factor him in your prayer adventure, in your work of Christ, you can't make it. Whatever is your dream, I expect God to heal me. 
It is Jesus that can pray me through to the uttermost. I want to get blessed. It is Jesus that can pray me through to be blessed. Remember, even though Abraham had a very powerful military squad, but that did not amount to the blessing until Melchizedek met him. When Melchizedek met Abraham in Genesis 14, then he brought bread and wine. When he brought bread and wine, then he blessed Abraham. The blessing of God only comes through the priesthood of Melchizedek and that Melchizedek is Jesus Christ. Child of God, if you are going to make it, if you are going to enter rest, you need to factor in the prayer ministry of Jesus Christ. Please and please, when you are praying, don't put confidence in yourself. When you are praying, factor in that Jesus is helping me to pray. Because he had finished everything. Did he not say it is finished on the cross? But he is still walking. And the only thing Jesus is doing now is now preaching. Shouldn't us be wise enough to know that if Jesus after he has suffered everything he is still doing one particular thing. Shouldn't us be wise enough to be doing that same thing? The Bible says looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross. How did he get to that place? In the garden of Gethsemane he stayed praying looking unto Jesus acting with Jesus in the place of prayer, focusing on the fact that Jesus ever lived it and he's making intercession for me. So it doesn't matter how weak my intercession doesn't go through. There, was, there is one who is helping me. Glory be to God. Did you understand? This is motivating and encouraging so that I know I'm not just praying by myself. Ah, hallelujah. When I'm praying here, he ever lived it and he's making intercession for me. And it means that if I'm doing my part, there is no way my miracle will not arrive. Because his goal of praying for me is to push me until I get to the uttermost. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If his prayer can get me to heaven, then his prayer can get me a job. Then his prayer can get me a good wife, a good husband. Then his prayer can keep me healthy. If his prayer can take me all the way to heaven, there is no way I am praying and he is praying and God cannot answer because he told us my father always hear me I can pray amiss I can pray out of selfishness I can pray out of vindictiveness I can pray out of anger but he doesn't pray out of vindictiveness so when my prayer is not coming through his prayer can push me glory be to God are you here? You need to tag team with Jesus so that your prayer can work. Amen? There's another thing that Jesus Christ does. In Hebrews chapter 7, the Bible reveals to us that this Jesus, beside the praying that he does, because the priest, what the priest does is that the priest does not enter the holiest of all empty-handed. So he is praying that two things the priest does. He prays for the people bringing them before God but he never comes empty handed. So the same thing Jesus is still doing. Hebrews chapter 7 the Bible reveals to us that when we collect offering on earth here, Jesus is also collecting it. <laughs> the same way you picture Jesus helping you to pray every time you are giving your tithe just see that you are not dropping it on the internet or dropping on the offering bucket because the Bible says give me that verse that says here men receive tithe but there he also receive it Hebrews 7 here men receive there he also receives. Here ushers receive. There he also receives. 
I wonder what it looks like if Jesus will stand before you physically or he is the one coming to collect the offerings today. I wonder your reaction. Would anybody in this sanctuary or watching online, if the Jesus that you believe in, the Jesus that you love, is the one collecting offering, I, I guarantee you, you will break off your button because you don't want him to pass without dropping anything. Remember, the Bible says they were casting their offerings and he showed us a little mirror that the Bible said when people were coming to give their offering, Jesus was watching. He was watching and he noticed that one woman, she gave the most among all of them. Jesus is watching as we give our offering now. Look at this scripture. It says, Here, mortal men do what? Receive tithes. But there, he receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. Here, mortal men. That is why it is God that rewards your giving. You can pretend and fake it and put an empty envelope just to look good. <laughs> People are playing church. People are playing with God. You can pretend and the ushers won't know. But the Bible says here men receive it. There he receives them too. So, as we take our offering, the same way you picture Jesus helping you to pray is the same way Jesus is stretching his hand to receive. He knows how much you earn. He knows what you earned last week. He knows. He knows the detail. He, you know, when the ten lepers left, one came back, he said, no, I am not careless. It was ten people that are healed. Oh, but you know, my bill was so overwhelming. That's fine. The trouble will be overwhelming too. <laughs> please and please, please and God has blessed you to be in a church where nobody is putting burden on you to pay tithe or offering. So stop deceiving yourself. No. It's God that keeps the record. That's why it is percentage. It has nothing to do with how much. No, it's the percentage. It's just a percentage. And it says, if you do this, see what I will do for you. So, here men receive it. We're getting ready for our offering now. Men receive it. There, Jesus also is receiving it. How much do you think is too much to give 10% of? Seeing that you have a high priest who is praying that you get to the other side. Hey, glory be to God. That stinginess is dead today in the name of Jesus Christ. That manipulations of the devil that makes you think if you don't eat up that ten dollar from hundred dollars, your life will not be at peace. That devil is dead today in your life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You see, you have to grow from one level to another level in your work with God. You must learn to grow. There are many things that by now you, it shouldn't be an issue in your life anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Yeah, there are things that you should you should add grow. The Bible says, seeing that we he is the one that we have to do with, everything is bare and open before him. We can't hide. Do you know what it means for Abraham? When we say Abraham, blessings are mine. Listen to me. Your paycheck is just $10,000 a week. Somebody say amen to that. And you're struggling to give $1,000 from it. Do you know what it means for Abraham to go to war against four nations? Do you know how much is the spoil from such and he gave a tenth of all of it. 
he didn't get it. I said, do you know what it means that he went to war with Ukraine? He won. Their central bank, every money that belonged to him. He went to war, another nation, and he conquered. And yet, Abraham, nobody, nobody gave him a Bible. But God taught him the mystery of how he will be blessed. He met a man he had never met before. That's why tithing has nothing to do with the church or the pastor. No! Abraham tied to a man that has no father, have no mother, no beginning of this, no ending of this. A stranger. He believed in the principle. He was seeing Melchizedek for the first time in his life. But he believed in what God had taught him as a secret for his blessing. Are you here? That poverty is dead in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, this year you must have that rest. Glory be to God. You must have that rest. Be very meticulous in the things that pertain to the patterns of heaven. If Abraham could give tithe from the spoil, how much have you made that the devil is telling you, oh, you don't need to give that money to the church. No, you're not giving your money to the church. You're giving it to Jesus. It's just a matter of how much you believe that he saved you and how much he has promised that he will bless you when you do what he has asked you to do. Glory be to God. Do you understand? Every now and then, every now and then, just to keep my giving life alive, I deliberately just practice to give away something. I'm telling you. You have to get to that place in your life that giving is no longer a challenge. Amen? You need to get to that place. And stop looking at people. Oh, they look blessed. You know? Like, you know, some people now, they're like, oh no, look at Pastor Jeff suit. He looks... He looks blessed. No. Is because I am doing what I'm doing, what I'm supposed to do. Amen. If you check my bank account, it will shock you. Ninety percent of what comes into my bank account goes out to church, to people. One man was starting a ministry. God told him to submit to me. They wanted to get their building. This is someone who is coming as a spiritual son. And for them to start, they needed a very, you know, sizable amount of money. <laughs> I said, send me your Zell number. He couldn't believe it. When the church people went to the building, he was telling me, sir, people were like, ha, ah, this is expensive. We can do. He said, first of all, my spiritual father gave me money too. So you people don't worry. I have a father. Amen. And I taught him many lessons about what giving is. I taught him what to do. It is a principle. Jesus is praying, tacting with him. I want to ask you, when was the last time, when was the last time that the word of God failed in anybody's life in scripture that followed him ardently? This is what I follow. I check Abraham, he was blessed. I check Isaac, he was blessed. I check Jacob, he was blessed. As crazy as Jacob was, because he aligned with the principles of his father, he was blessed. Glory be. There's no way you will be broke. There's no way you will end in danger or in disaster or in shame. Listen to me. If you follow the pattern, it works. Hallelujah. How many of you know what the mold blocks with? You know the blood, the block mold. You know, because it has already been shaped that way, as long as you put cement and sand in that thing, whether it's a baby or a woman or a man or old person, as long as you put cement, it will come out the same. Whether you're a professional or not a professional, just put cement and block inside. It will, it's a pattern. There's, there's no way you will end terrible. Just follow the pattern. The Bible says, search and locate the old pathways and walk in it. 
for there lies your rest. We are supposed to just copy. Amen. We're just supposed to copy. Copy what is done in the scriptures. Your life will become it. The easiest way to arrive at any destination is to follow somebody who has been there before. It takes away the burden. It takes away the stress. It takes away the anxiety. If someone says, hey, let's go eat. Where are we going? Follow me. Oh, I can make a phone call while I'm following you. All I need to do is just see where that car is. And I don't care who is coming between me. I will wiggle my way and make sure I'm behind that guy. Why? I am following somebody. And wherever they arrive, you will arrive where Abraham arrived. You will arrive where Jesus Christ arrived. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Stand to your feet and bring out your offering. Glory be to God. It's a pattern. When Moses violated the pattern, it didn't matter the relationship between Moses and God. God said you will never enter the promised land. When you violate patterns, God will judge you. Yeah. It didn't matter how, how good the relationship between Moses and God was. In fact, the Bible said he was the meekest of all men. Yet, he violated the principle. God said forget it. I've already programmed it in the heavens. And nobody violates it and goes scot free. Father, as we give today, as we give today, as we give today, Lord, hallelujah, let the life of the blessed be duplicated in everyone's life this month in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you today. I pray for you today. Every day, every demon for warring against your finances may the judgment of God fall on such altars whatever manipulates your resources in wastage in carelessness in the name of Jesus as you give today may the power of the devourer fizzle out permanently in the name of Jesus Christ Father we thank you in Jesus name Amen you may give your offering. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you guys so much for listening to this message. We do hope you were truly blessed by it. Please don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe, share with people, friends, family, colleagues, everyone around you. And also don't forget to turn on your post notification bell. It's right here so that you can get notified whenever we post a video. Thank you guys so much once again and do have a blessed week. Bye-bye.